The undeniably good-looking Jeep Grand Cherokee, a luxury, handsome beast, now available with a turbo diesel, long-awaited. Is it the perfect Grand Cherokee, or just the perfect reason to go back and check off the V8? Let's drive this 2014 Grand Cherokee Summit, all-wheel drive with the diesel. Check the tech. Now, it's not a stretch to say that the current Grand Cherokee is kind of the American Land Rover. They've taken this guy upscale, very mature and sophisticated in its lines, but it remains a serious off-roader. Spot the latest ones by a revised face and rump, slightly smaller, more streamlined taillights and such. In other words, it's just getting more elegant every year. Now, technically, a Grand Cherokee in this current guise is not a truck, at least not in the opinions of a purist, because it's not a body-on-frame vehicle. It's a unibody design, but it makes for a very car-like vehicle. Now, because we've got a Summit, which is the top trim level, we've got a standard 8.4-inch, squarish, but very large Uconnect head unit. We've seen this before in Grand Cherokees and other Chrysler products. I'm not going to go real deep on it. If you want to get some details on it, check out our other reviews of other trim Grand Cherokees. We're really here to talk about diesel today. I will mention, though, that at this point, CD is optional. We have one here in the console. You would get this either by optioning CD a la carte or getting the Blu-ray headrest system we have that I don't approve of. But basically, optical disc, bye-bye. Now, we have an all-wheel drive diesel vehicle, but because of the Grand Cherokee, this sort of American Land Rover thing, that's all been refined out. It comes down to a nice set of elegant electronics. Your shifter here is very familiar automatic shifter that goes to an 8 speed automatic and here you've got your mode you can go all the way over to snow sand an automatic selector and then you've got mud and rock selections augmenting that you've got choice of ride height here and you can lock her down in four low so you've got the full complement of real jeep off-road terrain rated stuff Now, interestingly, this new diesel in the Grand Cherokee is not a German unit, not an American unit, but because of the new Fiat parentage, it's made in Italy by VM Motors. And apparently, they've got a mechanic running around barefoot because someone left a sock in here. It's a turbocharged diesel, as they just about all are these days. 240 horsepower. Whew, it's kind of small for a big vehicle. 420 pound-feet of torque. This is a dramatic difference, a stark difference between those two metrics. And interestingly, of all the Grand Cherokees, this one has the least horsepower, but also the most torque. Now, the weight is stunning as well. I had to do a double take and reread the materials. 5,300 plus pounds curb weight. Zero to 60 happens in 7.8 seconds, which is kind of a miracle. But again, thanks to all that torque, it happens. Your MPG is actually pretty good for a vehicle of this weight. It's 21 city, 28 highway. That is eight miles per gallon better than the V8 5.7 liter Grand Cherokee. It's a huge difference, even though neither are numbers to brag about. All wheel drive on our vehicle, you can get these in rear wheel drive. Towing capacity in all wheel drive is 7,200 pounds. A little more actually if you get rear wheel drive. And your range, as diesels tend to have, is stunning. 730 miles on a tank. Let's get right to the heart of the issue. Driving this thing reminds me of a school bus. The power comes on pretty mushily. It's rubbery throttle response. There's a ton of power there, don't get me wrong but it's not accessible in a responsive way. I find that part to be a chore to drive. On the other hand, the ride quality is superb. Even over really crappy, muddy, rutted roads where you would take this thing, ride quality is nice. And if it weren't for that engine, the interior cabin noise would be superb as well. So the engine and its behavior and power delivery and noise are completely at odds with the way this car looks outside and in. And of course, it feels its weight. It feels its 5,300 something pounds, but not in a tubby way. It's, uh, it's well controlled weight, which not every suspension can lay claim to doing successfully. Visibility is not bad all around the vehicle. You've got some pretty good vis out the corners because of a large quarter window between the C and D pillars. And of course, remember this is a two row car. There is no third row or third row option. Okay, let's price our Summit Diesel in our 2014 configuration. This guy's going to start off a little over 48,000 delivered. That's just for a Summit. Add all-wheel drive, 3,000. Add the diesel option, 5,000. It's an a la carte tick box. 
The only other option I would add on this high trim vehicle is the optical disc drive. Why not? You've got a thousand CDs at home. I would skip the $2,000 dual headrest Blu-ray system like the Plague and go get a couple of iPads. All in a little over five years to pay off the diesel option here. That's ballpark math. You need to value things like it's very long range, it's unique torque curve, although it's towing capacity on this vehicle is no better than a gas V8. Here's who this vehicle appeals to. Someone who bemoans how nice Jeeps have gotten in recent years, or drives a Ram Cummins pickup as their work truck, or generally likes the sound of a diesel engine. For the rest of us, this one doesn't necessarily fit.